Hey guys, welcome back to Soccerholics TV for what's going to be quite an emotional episode. It's going to prepare our viewers for that first, but I uh, just want to say thank you to the Toronto weather for opening up finally. We're on the patio, we're chatting with you, we've got beers and the sun is out. No more winter, we hope. So if you haven't been around this week listening to the news, uh, shame on you, but uh, the biggest story coming out of the UK is Arsene Wenger, the manager of Arsenal Football Club for 22 years, is stepping down at the end of the season. Uh, it's caught me off guard being an Arsenal fan. Uh, I'll find out how, it, how, uh, how Chris reacted to the news. Uh, but um, all the fans of Arsenal were quite in sadness, actually, over the last few days, I would say, looking at Twitter, Instagram, all the social networks. But the people, the fans have got behind the team. Uh, they won today at home against West Ham 4-1. But speaking more about Arsenal and the legacy of Arsene Wenger, what he's brought to the club, uh, Chris, why didn't you chime in? Let me know how you're feeling right now. Because well, I, I was know. a bit emotional. I, I don't know. You, you stole all the words, man. But oh, I, I, I you guess can, you I'll, can say I'll, the words well, again. Well, no. Then we'll just be repeating the content That's to the okay. consumers. No, how'd no, you no, feel no. as a fan? Come on, how'd well, you feel? I'll, 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 I'll be okay. okay. So like it was 4:20. So that's a very important day. It was a very high day for a lot of <laughs> folks, but it was right. a very high emotional day for some fans and people because you know what? For the fan base, it's been very divided. Venga in, venga out. You see some parody videos done by Dream Team, some other different. Producers as well, the moment of how Arsenal fans are supposed to feel. And honestly, it's just another day of reflection. For me, like, he's still manager. When he's done, he's not a manager anymore. And that's the simple way I've always had looked at it. I've always treated the game from like a game by game basis with him. And I know a lot of people get frustrated because the results haven't been there. And it's kind of like there's almost a pattern of habit on how you look at Arsenal. They may start off strong or they may start off poorly. But they usually finish strong or they finish poorly. They may get knocked out of Champions League. They may get knocked out of Europa League, whatever you want to call it whatever competition, they've won trophies. And Arsene Wenger's career is just simply looked in three arcs. High success, first 10 years, basically transformed the Premier League. The Premier League adapted, but he was thinking ahead for the future managers in this case, and that's why the Emirates Stadium got built. And now in this third arc, He's kind of prepped the culture almost, you would say. And I maybe you're giving him way too much credit, but like the negative voice, the force, the board to make this motion has almost united the Arsenal pack of like, you know, the days of old that this man can do it again versus the people that want something new, something inspiring. And mind you, we may get something new and inspiring, but at the same time, we may go to shit. We may do what Manchester United did for like three, four seasons. And I'm not sure a lot of Arsenal fans are ready for that because now you don't have your golden crutch anymore to blame Arsene Wenger anymore. So, as a fan, that's what I meant by I prepared myself for this, like, just day by day. So if you do it day by day and look at it, okay, like, we beat West Ham today, congrats. If we, for instance, lose to Atletico midweek, I wouldn't be surprised if we did. If we beat them, cool. If we don't, but if we lose, I got to look forward to the next game. Yeah. And that's just always been my mentality as a sports fan in recent years. It kind of helps numb the pain of being so emotionally invested with every article, every press conference. And speaking on press conferences, are you going to miss his press conferences? Uh, probably not, no, because he's pretty dull in the press conferences. Really? He doesn't really see, he's not as animated as like Mourinho or Conte or, really, or uh, no. Guardiola. Not really. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe from like a footballing standpoint, I can understand where you're coming from with the Mourinho's, the Conte's, and Pep Guardiola. Like, they're new and modern, but remember back in the, de back in the day, Arsene Wenger was all those managers you just listed. Yeah. He brought that color. Like, you know, when he told Fergie, like, you know, like, about the wife comment, for instance, and the other when like, you've given, like, luxury food, for instance, and then, like, it's hard to go back down the sausages and other stuff. Like, I may be misquoting him, but the point is, is he's maybe rethink some stuff, and it's been a fire-shaped emergency. Yeah, yeah. You can't really do much about this, man. It's Toronto. It's patio season, and we're on fire. Literally, as a fire truck comes behind us. But, um, like, for me personally, I was 15 years of age when... 15, I think about 15 years of age when Arsene Wenger took charge, 37 now. So in 22 years, you know, this is, I mean, Arsene, Arsene Wenger is, is Arsenal. Uh, when I heard the news, it's funny, when I heard the news, I was actually really a little bit emotional. I'm on this Arsenal group and we're slagging him off in all the previous games because he's not doing his job. But it's actually, he's really affected people. And that's, and, and that's the thing I love about football. This is a, a game, a sport with emotion. And this is personal. And it's like, when the play, I mean, the play, they did an interview with Per, per Madisak, I don't know if you saw that, on Arsenal TV. When he just got told the news, he was actually really emotional about it. He's been affected because Arsene Wenger has changed 
the game for English football, but also he's he's done really well for for the players, and he's made them into much more better attacking professional players. And they're trying he's trying to get the most out of them in the game, and that's what I love about him. Um, it, it's it's really sad, but also it comes down a bit of controversy because now it's been revealed that he actually didn't step down; he was actually sacked. No, it doesn't. Yes, because, like, for you heard me, about that, right? no, I, I know, I know, I know. No, no, I, I have some inside sources. I know that he was offered, regardless of win or lose, the Europa League, whatever you want to say. And I don't want to name my inside source because no. everyone's going to follow my inside source. I'll let him do his job. But essentially, it's the same thing. Twenty-two years, he's going to get sad. For instance, you can say the same thing with Jack Wilshere. Jack Wilshere is not going to be offered a higher contract, by the way. No, okay. He, so that's just a narrow little tidbit. For you to but, but, go back. But wait, but he because but he, he, Wenger he, just resigned a new contract. Right? Yes, he resigned a new so contract. This is, this but is quite the, shocking. But, but the, the board is trying to stay face for the public, hence why everyone announced the resignation for that for the 420 on April 4th. You know, or not April 4th, <laughs> April 20th. Yeah. That Arsene Wenger would be stepping down. Yeah. So, as captivating as the announcement is, it doesn't surprise me. The board has established the foundation to make up for the other aspects of what other footballing clubs, modern football clubs have. You know, having a director of football now, you know, and also having like an executive director to announce and do the PR. That's why you had Ivan Gazias, for instance, coming out. Yeah. Even though that I personally felt that the press conference was irrelevant, it wasn't required. He could have literally just posted an article on the website. Arsene Wenger could have easily done it. He made the announcement and that was good enough. That's for me. But uh, to touch on some of those points of some of the players that have touched them, you know Robin Van Persie reached out back to him. Oh, did he? Okay. Cesc Fabregas, yeah. Nasri, I didn't see Emmanuel Adebayor, and some people were questioning Alexis Sanchez as well. But it's... To touch on your point before, Arsene Wenger, even though he's not as animated as those managers that you listed prior before, the point I was trying to get at was that, like, he understands how to be, like, a good human being. Like, he is, like... Uh, a father figure to a lot of people as well, but he's also a good mentor as well. He keeps up with the times and he does his best and he always wants to try to do better because he's always learning. Yeah. That's what this yeah, job's yeah. all about. And yeah. For him, his next stage of learning is like, hey, can I be a manager at like a PSG or a president elsewhere? That's what he's or, been linked with. Yeah, well, yeah. you never know. Never know yeah. Or he could retire and, you know, go the Fergie way. Yeah. And like, it's a touch of class when you have like, you know, old managers, current managers paying their respect to him. Yeah. For instance, like, I think this upcoming Thursday with uh, Europa League coming, I think that's going to be the 125th team that Arsenal is going to be facing. Really? And wow. I think with Arsene, he's only lost 10 of those first 124 matches. So will it be 11? I don't know. Let's hope not. Let's I hope not. not but but uh, Arsene like is Arsenal. You know, he is a legend. He's changed the game. Longest ser ever serving manager in the English Premier League. Which is no. such a great he is now, yeah, past Alex Fergus. So, mm -hmm. so that's what I'm saying. It's it's gonna be quite interesting. Um, and I'm actually now thinking like who's gonna well we'll talk about in another episode who will take over from Arsenal who from Arsenal, but let's hope it's someone uh, who has a lot of experience because they have a lot of pressure on them to take over as such a big momentous club such as Arsenal. So uh, so I'll ask you one last question yeah, then, really. and then we'll wrap it up. What will you take away from his 22 year? I will take away the fact that he played an, an amazing different style of football and he gave young players their chance. That's what I liked about him. He gave, you know, Jack Wilshire, Theo Walcott back from Southampton. Like He took these players when they were young and he groomed them into great players of today and that's what I love about him and his footballing coaching because not all clubs do that they bring players in instead of instead of uh, bringing the, the bringing the homegrown talent and he brought a lot of English players in we're from the yeah. youngsters so that's what I loved about him that's what I miss about him and I'll just miss you know his passion you know he just wants to win and you know he had a hard time with the fans hard time with the press and I miss him you know he's, he's been a part of my life because he's a guy that I always see on the TV for for 22 years I'm honestly you know? gonna miss his press conferences probably <laughs> the most and I know you laugh about it but like he when most managers get asked about football he can answer a question he's not maybe sometimes the most entertaining he's got the cheeky joke yeah. he stays classy but when it comes to like humanity like when you hear about like the players that he's helped yeah. and like different tragedies happening across the world he always had such knowledgeable insight yeah. and he was such an optimist in believing in people to be better so for some how should i say like depressing arsenal fans or depressing people in general they never really helped him 
Yeah. You know, like he always was an uplifting person. So. All right. Cool. Let's, let's end this in an uplifting though. So let's wrap yeah, it up. Yeah, let's wrap it up. So guys, uh, let me say we think. Obviously, Arsenal fans watching. Uh, you know, are you sad about him leaving? Uh, are you shocked about him leaving? Who's your choice to take over in the hot seat? Let us know. All the social medias come up on the screen, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you name it, we have it. Uh, for myself and Chris, and the beautiful city of Toronto in the afternoon, the sun is shining, we say goodbye, and we'll see you next time on Sockholics TV.